I have a uh, Retina Reflex here, a um, Type 025, the original Retina Reflex. This one uh, is apparently unmolested, it's complete, but it doesn't work. And uh, you can't see anything through the finder. The shutter cocks doesn't stay open, or certainly doesn't open all the way, and you can't really see anything through the find at that time, it didn't even cock at all. So I've got to decide what's wrong with it and hopefully fix it. I can see that the blades are open there. That's the aperture blades I can see there, the diaphragm blades, shutter blades in front of them. Shutter blades are just showing in the edge of the hole there. No, they're certainly not opening all the way. And there's the shutter blades failing to close. So, what can I tell about it? Well, the lens has a UV filter on the front. Fairly heavily finger marked on the outside, but probably okay. This camera I'll be stripping down completely to service. Normally I would start with one of these by removing the shutter. And I'll do that if I can find the right screwdriver. Starting here, that's not the right screwdriver. That focus knob is held in place with a single screw. Then our focus scale ring with the printed numbers. That's held in place with a single chrome screw. Very short thread on that screw. Now our focus scale ring should lift out if we're very lucky. Might need a bit of poking and prodding. I think I'll get a toothpick to do that so I don't scratch it. That's it, get it started. I'll rotate that past that lever so that I can get the end free. And just lift this ring out of the slot all the way around. Pop it carefully to one side where it won't get damaged. Now, under that there's a chrome ring here. On the inside of the knurled edge there's a little chrome ring sitting in that space. And sometimes it'll helpfully come out for you. Generally it's got to be pushed out. On the back of the focus mount I've cranked the focus out to a close focus distance and there's a single hole visible in that in the bottom of that ring and if I poke something down there I should be able to prod that focus that chrome ring loose where it'll be held in place with accumulated finger grease and uh, dust. It doesn't want to move. I will find a paper clip. Right, I've got my paper clip. I'll bend the end up at 90 degrees. Or thereabouts. That's it. So I'll pop that in from the back, pop that ring loose. 
and lift that over the uh, setting lever for the self timer and here it exposes four small screws so we'll remove those Right, they're loose. Now what this does is it uh, releases the whole focus, uh, the front scale and everything from the helical at the back of it. So we can lift this off in one piece. There's our shutter assembly. And if the camera had been recently serviced so that we knew that everything else was in a good state and we just wanted to attend to some problem with the shutter this was all, all we'd have to do we don't wouldn't need to remove the front of the camera in practice none of that's true the camera certainly does need to be serviced I'm checking to see if the mirror does latch down now into position with the shutter missing and it does and it flips back up into position so the mirror is present and does work so there's no broken components there I'm just going to check by looking out the window what the state of the viewfinder is like and I can tell immediately that the prism is blackened and basically it's silvering is completely shot so it will need to have the prism replaced and I'll certainly have to do that our shutter I think this time I'll service the body first and then come back to the shutter once the body is in a fit state. For the moment I'm going to uh, roll that out of focus helical back against the body just so that I'm not um, displacing it, losing it. To remove the top cover we start by opening the cap back of the camera put something through the fork of the rewind knob oh that came off quite easily sort of suggests someone has had a look in here and then perhaps thought better of it I remove this single pinhead screw at the top there's one on top of the meter I'm just going to revolve this round and see where that scale is set because that'll give me a clue that yeah that looks looks like it's not in the right position or not in the right position for a meter that actually reads relatively accurately we'll take that knob off two screws at this end these are chrome brass easily scratched to be careful with them you want to use screwdrivers in good condition and take care not to allow your screwdriver to slip I'm holding my finger on that meter as I lift the top cover off I'm checking the top cover now to see if there's any signs of abuse there's a bit of corrosion on this back edge um, no obvious reason for that the meter is held in this case with a single screw at this end frequently the plastic on the meter will be broken this one is intact don't lose too much sleep over the fact that it's broken that's exceptionally common it's much rarer that they would be intact it doesn't cause you any significant problem you can lift off the shutter release button the button itself the shaft and notice the shaft has a return spring notice the length of that return spring because it's not the same as the length of the return spring on the film release button here the one on the film release button is longer the 
that little piece of metal that just fell off would have been fixed to the top of the prism at one stage. Its job would be to help protect that prism um, from handling damage. I can see here, though you may not be able to see, I can see straight in through the coating here, the black paint is given way at this stage. Um, the silvering underneath it is given way and the black paint's come off with it. I can see straight into the glass here. You'll probably be able to see that. If I angle that to the light a bit better, you probably see that we can see straight into the prism at that point. The silvering's gone completely. That prism is officially buggered. So I'm just going to crank my advance slightly so that this arm here, which sets the frame counter, is clear of the prism. I'll remove the three nickel plated screws that hold the prism to the body, one either side and a slightly smaller one at the back. And now the screw head on the smaller one at the back is chewed up. That means that the camera has been serviced before. Pop these parts carefully aside. Lift out the prism and finder assembly, which is a bit tight to get out. I'm looking at the state of this. No one has had this bottom section apart, I would say. Um, certainly someone's had the prism off. There is normally tape around the edges here. See that you use to keep the dust out from between the prism and the housing. There's no tape there at all. Now the state of the prism is much uglier than the state of everything around it. So it tells me that most likely this camera served as a parts source to someone and they robbed the good prism to put it into their good camera and then being a mean bastard they put this one back out onto the marketplace for some lucky, some optimistic person to buy with a view to having a working camera one day. Just looking at the condition of the screw down here, I thought it was damaged, but in fact I think that was loose paint, uh, probably paint that came off that prism. Remove the screws holding this bar down in place. And one of them looked a little bit suspect, a little bit short to me. I would generally use a longer screw there. I'm looking at the state of the rack. That appears to be good. I'm going to lift off this chrome trim at the top. There's two more screws left here. The one at the front's damaged. Tells me someone's been in there before. And the chrome trim comes off. I notice there's a shim washer here that sat underneath that clamp bar that held down the rack. We may or may not need to use that when I reassemble it. I can remove the Rewind assembly. Poke the inner out and the outer. So there's three major sections there. Now they'll all need to go in the cleaner. I'll take this post off the top of the body just because I don't need it in my way. While I'm here, I'll remove that screw from the top of the film advance lever. And we can remove these components, the gear, the washer from underneath. This drive dog assembly. 
it's very gooey. It's um, grease is very sticky, which suggests no one had serviced this part of the camera. I'll remove the screw from the little ratchet pull there. And this one here holding down the shaft guide assembly to the body. I'll remove the single screw and its spring from the top of the release lever. And I'll remove the spring, the circlip and uh, spring from the top of the lock lever. That pretty much finishes the removal work at the top of the camera for now. And I can turn my attention to dealing with the bottom of the camera. At this stage, before I tip things upside down completely, I'm going to remove that flash contact and its spring. I'll remove the two ball bearings and that brass sleeve arrangement from the drive dog here that cocks the shutter only because I'm scared that they'll end up falling out if I don't remove them at this stage in which case they bounce off the table into a corner somewhere and are never seen again right now I need to strip the bottom of the camera time to get to work with my scalpel and I want to lift the leather patch off the advanced lever first The leatherette is in very good condition, looks to be stuck very well, doesn't look to have been molested, which suggests that either it was replaced when the camera had been serviced at some stage in the past, or it's the original and has never been disturbed. That has never been disturbed before, I can tell by the adhesive, which is black. Um, it isn't shellac, but it has a vague appearance of shellac. Three screws from the top of the, from the advanced lever. One of them's a bit hard to get to. I'm just looking at that. Looks like the slot is misshapen. It's certainly clogged with something. The slot's slightly off centre on the screw head. That's a bit unusual. Yeah, it's coming loose. The slots are quite uh, narrow and not particularly deep, a bit hard to get the screwdriver started there. The back catch release cover held by two small screws, chrome brass, easily damaged. Be careful not to let your screwdriver slip. That mechanism came off in one piece and it should have a little return spring which here it is there I thought it had bounced off the table but we're fortunate it hadn't now to remove the leatherette from the base of the camera I'll start at this end see if I can get under the leatherette It is stuck down well. I know from the state of the leatherette on that uh, film advance lever that the film advance lever had never been off the camera. So that indicates 
if no one had taken the advanced lever off, no one could have removed the leatherette from the base of the camera either. The leatherette's lifting fairly well from the chrome base trim. Typically it's easy to work from the edges towards the centre. The adhesive is slightly brittle, I can hear it crack as it comes away. Oddly enough, removing the leatherettes is one of the most time-consuming parts of the job when you're repairing a, an old camera like this. When the com cameras were comparatively current, leatherettes would have still been fairly fresh and fairly flexible and so were often easier to remove but if they gave any trouble at all they would have just been torn off in pieces and a new leatherette from the spare parts department would have been fitted when we're reassembling the camera because that was the most economic way to go about the repair. Now when leatherettes are not available if you want the camera to look original or even if you just want to avoid the hassle of having to make a new leatherette it's important to get the leatherettes off in one piece And it's worth noting that if you do crack the leatherette or even make a cut through it with your scalpel that's not the end of the world once it's glued back down in place injuries of that nature are often completely invisible and if they're not they can be fixed with a little bit of black wax Black Crayola is a handy thing to have. Anyone who's been uh, involved in restoring furniture would be probably familiar with using wax to cover holes and it's not a dissimilar process well, it's looking fairly good it's reluctant to move right in the middle there that's it, it's lifted off, just waiting to crack that last bit so there's our leatherette all off in one piece this little aluminium uh, cover just covers the position of this little hold down here that a spring sits on and uh, that'll be put back before we glue the leatherette back so leatherette off the camera at the, now we can take the screws from the base trim is there seven on here? six
seven. Be careful when lifting this chrome trim off. There will be a spring underneath the plate. And uh, get under here and lift this off, it's reluctant. Have to give this a little push, I think, to encourage it. Let's see if I can get under that edge. Give it a push. That's it. As I said, there's a spring in here. The spring. It's quite a stiff little spring. It serves as part of the mirror um, locking settings. Remove that rod. That rod was our lock lever. This rod is our release lever. And the release lever has a return spring on the base, which I'm removing carefully so it doesn't get damaged in the cleaning process. Right, now I can remove the rewind button and it's for shaft, so I'll go and get the spanner for that. Got my modified pliers for holding the rewind button. A cheap pair of needle nose pliers, I cut the front off them. Stuck them in the vise, drilled the hole down in between the two sides, the right diameter to allow it to grab the rewind button. It's important to buy cheap pliers because you want ones with terrible steel qualities, not too hard. If they were very tough, you might have trouble drilling those. In fact, I'm sure you would. So I'll remove the single screw here that drives the sprocket shaft. Remove the shaft. Remove our sprocket. We can lift out this film uh, shaft guide. Film advanced shaft guide. Lift out the clutch. The clutch is three pieces. So I'll disassemble those for the cleaning. Here's another one of those little aluminium covers that has fallen off. The body base of the camera, and in that case it's come from this position. That's where you would adjust the mirror, the reflex mirror, so that your focused image at the film plane and your focused image on the screen matched. So I'll loose release the screw from the rewind button lock lever loosen that screw that was a tough one it's important to keep a lot of downward pressure on screws so that the screwdriver doesn't slip out of the slot um, so it's useful to have something to work on. I find this little block of wood is a very handy thing. It's not very sophisticated looking, but it's a, it's a great convenience. Now yeah, there are three screws hold the film advance shaft into the camera. This is very sticky. Um, just going to rotate that till I find the three screw heads. through the holes it's uh, very reluctant to move that'll do you can see them there these three screws are often loose 
In this case they're not, they're tight. If they are loose it can cause you problems with the film advance. Basically what happens is it allows this cam to float slightly and that can change the point at which the film release acts relative to the shutter. So you can find yourself having to push the film release button on the top of the camera multiple times through the course of a film. So we can remove our take-up spool. Our take-up spool there shows a couple of crushed up film chips on it. Film chips being the pieces of film between the sprocket holes on the film that have been torn out when somebody got to the end of the film uh, have not having set their frame counter correctly and kept winding. 